got a few on the docket. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to call the cases and see uh, who's here. So I know which I can proceed on. Uh, but before we begin, I do want to bring to everyone's attention that I am live streaming today's proceedings on YouTube. Um, because all of you had to have a password to access today's proceedings. Obviously, there's no public access. Otherwise, uh, the solution we came up with is uh, is a live stream. Um, I'm letting you know this because hey, I just want to disclose that, that it's happening, but also I don't want anyone to have the impression that this is creating some sort of a record. You still have to bring a court reporter if you want a record. Um, the live stream will be deleted immediately upon the conclusion of today's proceedings. All right. So I've got uh, 17 SC 660 Na Naples HMA versus Curtis Collins. Uh, do I have counsel for Naples HMA? Yes, Sarah Jordan for Naples HMA. Good morning. Are you also here on uh, 20 SC 21? Versus Jeremy Sternangle, yes. Yes. All right. And let's see. Got Daniel Larson versus James Massa, 20 SC 3207. Mr. Larson, good morning. Yes, I'm here. And Mr. Walters, are you here on behalf of uh, James Massa? That is correct, Your Honor. Very good. And then let's see. So do I have either Jeremy Sternagel or Curtis Collins present? I have someone signed in under Florencia Angle. Go ahead and unmute. Which case are you here for? Someone logged in under Florencia Angle. Please go ahead and unmute. Yes. yes. Good morning, Judge. I am sorry. I I am Florencia Angle. I'm representing Wells Fargo on Wells ah. Fargo versus Jeb. All right. And I just wanted to notify you, Judge. I'm sorry. I'm driving on 95 North. There was an accident, and I was not able to exit to make the call. But that case has settled. I don't know if 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 or if you want me to go back in 20 minutes to appear properly. I can do that. Um, no, are you, are you, um, choosing your, your, just tell me you're, you're not going to proceed on the motion for summary judgment at this time? No, we're not because the case, we have a stipulation that the defendant will sign. So we're, we're going to continue that. And I believe it was also set for trial. So we wanted that canceled as well. No problem. I'll make sure that gets taken care of. Just file your notice of settlement and, uh, along with the, um, you know, the, the, the proposed settlement in order. Okay. Okay, thank you, Judge. I appreciate it and I apologize. For no, thank you. Drive safely, okay? Okay, thank you, Judge. All right, take care. Bye bye. All right. So, one moment, let me just mark that. All right. Um, so let me go ahead and address, because I have, do have both parties present, um, Ms. Jordan, I appreciate your patience, but let me just uh, see if the uh, defendants on your cases, um, give them a couple minutes to see if they might appear, okay? All right, so let me address Mr. Larson and Mr. Walters. This is 20SC3207. Uh, this is the defendant's motion to dismiss. Um, I did have an opportunity to review the motion as well as Mr. Larson's response. Mr. Larson, go ahead and unmute, please. All right. Uh, are both parties ready to proceed? Yes, we are, Your Honor. Yes. All right. Uh, this is the uh, defendant's motion. So, counsel, whenever you're ready. Thanks very much, Your Honor. Good morning. Theodore Walters for James W. Massa. The basis for the motion to dismiss, Your Honor, is quite simple. The plaintiff has sued the wrong person. Uh, the plaintiff has sue James W. Massa in his individual capacity. However, all of the allegations of the complaint arise from Dr. Massa's dental practice here in Naples. Um, Dr. Massa operates his dental practice through a Florida professional corporation, uh, and that would have been the proper party to sue. Uh, the statement of claim actually admits this. It says that it's the, the matters relate solely pertaining to the dental practice and not to Dr. Massa in his personal capacity. Um, there's a statement that Mr. Larson made in his statement of claim where he says, I sue as individuals, not a corporation or other entity, as I can find no entity Massa Dental Center 
registered with the Division of Corporations. Yet there is one. It's, it's not called Masa Dental uh, Center, but it is James W. Masa DDS PA. So the statement of claim really does need to be dismissed because it was simply brought against the wrong party. Um, this is also addressed in the motion to dismiss motion that uh, Mr. Larson filed. He also admits there that the matter is a professional dental issue arising from Dr. Moss's dental office um, and arises from his capacity as a dentist. So the bringing the case against James W. Moss in his individual capacity when there are no allegations that pertain to him as an individual is incorrect. And we respectfully request that the court dismiss the motion with prejudice. Well, my only question would be then, would it not be appropriate if I were to grant your motion to do it without prejudice and, and leave to amend to to name the proper party? Well, I, I think, Your Honor, as far as James W. Moss in his individual capacity, I do think it's correct to dismiss that with prejudice because, again, there are no allegations against him personally. Um, I think it's more than a, a, an amendment, however. I think I think this case needs to be dismissed and a new case brought. I don't I don't think he can amend it to add a, add a party defendant. I understand. All right. Thanks, Mr. Thanks Larson. Your Honor. Mr. Larson, you responsible? Uh, yeah. Well, uh, my, my um, position is also quite simple. Uh, uh, yes, it is accurate that the reason I brought the motion the way I did is because I could not I, I could not find a registry that he was uh, an owner of. Um, and uh, when that information was presented by uh, uh, this council, um, I responded by stating, look, he, he is still liable for this company uh, making this distinction uh is is uh dr mesa cannot run uh this business without his personal dental license he saw me in the capacity uh, of his dental license um and uh, I, he would not have been in a position to charge me uh for a device that he never provided had he not personally been a, denti a dentist who owned this business One All right. Given the nature of your complaint, Mr. Larson, you know, it, it's, a, it's a disagreement over a, a service provided in particular a refund that you feel you're entitled to. A refund would come from the corporation, which would be uh, James W. Massa DDSPA. Is that correct? Is that the, Mr. Walter, that's the name of the corporation? That is correct, Your Honor. Um, you know, the whole purpose, Mr. Larson, of the, of the formation of a corporation is exactly this, is to uh, shield individuals from personal liability uh, under you know, circumstances where their business is acting in a certain way. Um, that That is one of the primary functions of a corporation is that, you know, the individual owners are not personally liable for the actions of the corporation. Um, um, and this, I understand that. In this um, case, you know, your, your um, you know, your, your dispute is with the company, you know, the, 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 the dental practice of Dr. Massa, not him personally. Yeah. Um, and because but, he, he wasn't acting as, you know, as, as a, uh, he wasn't acting as an individual, he's acting as a, as a employee, if you will, or, or agent of the corporation. Uh, under the circumstances in this case, uh, the motion dismiss is granted. There's there's nothing about this that stops you, sir, from refiling a new case uh, against James W. Moss at DDSPA, right? Um, and then you can bring your claim that way. But you have to bring against the appropriate party. Under the law, the, the, the dental practice is its own separate 
entity as much as a human being is um, for these types of purposes, okay? Understood. Um, so, uh, Council, uh, you'll, uh, you'll prepare me a, a proposed order then? I will do that, Your Honor. Um, and again, you know, you know, Dr. Massa, in his personal capacity, the motion dismissed with prejudice is granted. Um, you know, Mr. Larson, you are free at any point to refile your claim against the dental practice um, and bring your case in, in that way, okay? Thank you. All right, thank you. Your Honor, may, may I email the proposed order to Chambers yes. or is, is yes, that sir. acceptable? Yes, sir, you can email it to my judicial assistant. Do you have okay. her, uh, do you have her email address? I, I'm sure I can find it on the website. Very good. Yeah, please email it to her in Word format, and um, I'll, I'll get that. Uh, I'll get that filed. All right. Thank you, Your Honor. All right. Thank, thank you, Your Honor. Appreciate it. Take care. You too. All right, Counsel. I appreciate your patience. Let's go ahead and address your cases. Um, so let me, let me start with the. Uh, uh, the ease, well, I guess this is the easier one. This is 17 SC 660, uh, Naples HMA LLC versus Curtis Collins. Uh, a while back, um, there was a motion for uh, contempt, which was granted. Um, yes. And I had issued an order to show cause, I believe. Um, and part of it required the attendance of the defendant at a deposition. Mm -hmm. But the proposed order with the date came subsequent to the date of the actual deposition that was set. Um, so I was uh, reluctant to sign that order to potentially hold someone in contempt uh, for a date that had already passed. <laughs> um, so I communicated that to uh, your office and um, I got a new proposed order that just said with a date to be set um in the future and mm -hmm. that makes me a little uncomfortable too because i'm not prepared to incarcerate somebody on a contempt uh order if we don't really make it explicitly clear where they need to be and when okay and so i said i just i started to set this just so i could make it clear what my position was especially with the the, the slim hopes that mr collins would show up so i can just tell him to his face right. uh, please go to the depot get it done so we can be done with this business uh, that didn't happen, but if you can give me a new order uh, with a specific date of a deposition that's set, and please do it far enough in the future, because uh, I am insistent that we obtain personal service on somebody before I'm willing to uh, hold them in contempt. Uh, if, if I may, Your Honor, I went back and reviewed uh, all of the notes on this case, and it appears that sometime between the hearing and um, the order, I'm not sure if it was between the hearing and the order being filed, we actually obtained um, work information on the defendant and were seeking to garnish. Okay. Um, so we weren't necessarily, I think we'd filed a withdrawal of our contempt motion because we did not need to proceed in that, in that manner anymore. I never got the withdrawal. Okay. So that would be the problem. <laughs> right. Well, that takes care of that. Yeah. Perfect. Well, that was even easier. <laughs> All right. Uh, please just ha please just file that, and then we're in good shape. File the motion to withdraw. Yes, please. Okay, sure. Um, all right, and that leaves us with the motion for summary judgment. Yes, Your Honor. Okay. Um, oh. Yes, ma'am. Go ahead. So this defendant had originally answered pro se and filed a counterclaim to the. Um, to our complaint, uh, stating that he had, uh, I guess, received uh, poor care at our, my client's facility. Right. Um, we sought a motion to dismiss or motion to strike the counterclaim, which she did grant with without prejudice. Um, and you no know, refiled counterclaim, I don't believe. Right. Okay. So we're here today seeking a motion for um, summary disposition because. The defendant did uh, did state in his answer that he um, received the services, therefore admitting liability. Um, and since this is simply a matter of, of money owed and not the level of care received, we would um, ask for a judgment against the defendant. 
All right, let me just make sure that the notice went out appropriately. The notice went out on February 1st. It's today's 22nd, had the Zoom codes on it. Mm -hmm. Well, I received notice for today. Did, have you gotten a, a, a return that is unserved notice for today? So before I proceed. Um, service. And service C, apartment 201. This is the same address as we sent notice for the last hearing, which, which they attended, I believe. I think we just mailed it to them. I don't think we did a no, I wouldn't expect you to do a process server. I just wanted to see if it was mailed and whether or not it was returned, if the address that we've been using is still good. I don't see any return mail in here. Okay. I'll double check the notes. Let me check. Oh, uh, we did receive an updated address from the postmaster, but we did resend everything to okay. the new address. It was only... Um, when was that? When was a that? Week ago. A week ago? On the 15th. We remailed everything. Hmm. Well, that's that's a concern only because I can I can tell you we've had we've had problems with the mail being slow lately. Yeah. I mean if you're if your honor wants to reset the hearing, I don't think that will be an issue. Just um if you don't mind, yeah. I just um I just like to make sure they got notice because you know because they have been participatory in the proceedings. Yes. Um, so let's um, let's just let's just reset with enough notice. Uh, if you want, I can uh, step away for a moment and get my judicial assistant um, to give you a date right now. Okay. If that's more convenient, or you can have your office to schedule with her later. Whatever's easier for you. Oh, we can schedule it with her later. Okay. All right. All right. So, so we're into, you know, not heard, you know, because of, you know, I don't want to say you know, non-service. We just don't know. Um, yeah, I understand. And uh, if you're willing to reschedule, that'd be great. No problem. All right. Well, I think that does it for us today. It sure does. Thank you so much for your Thank time. Thank you, Council. Have a great day. Take you care. Too.